are y'all doing? But here with your new little creations. I have got a ton of leftover paints. I'm gonna do some spring cleaning. Now, I know, I know. I have a rule. Five, maybe six colors in a piece. Otherwise, I get some bad actors. Well, guess what? We're gonna just wrap that up in a little package cover it in plastic explosives and kaboom blow it out of the water so let's go bite oh boy am i gonna have to do the dishes when i finish up with this one <laughs> another one of those projects that barely fits into the camera okay what we do in here we have 41 different colors 42 if you count the Custom mixed violet that I utilized to rub down the edges and finish the sides of the canvas. Um, I kind of don't count that color because it should be covered if I do my job right. But we shall see. Let's see what craziness we've got. We've got one more violet. We've got artist loft light violet, folk art amethyst. Purple from Snow Cooler that has no name because they're too cheap to include one. I don't recommend Snow Cooler paints, just so you know. This is Deco Art Amethyst. Folk Art Purple Topaz. There's an expansive one for you. And this is a very, very little bit of mixed uh, Deco Art Deep Sapphire and Deco Art Amethyst that makes it a lovely color that dries really nicely that I mostly used up when I was doing uh, Pegasus, the feather. So this is the purples, the purple part of our rainbow. Guessing I'm going to start with the violet. That is the wrong container. Hello. Okay. Um, yeah, more washing. Here's the container we actually wanted, and I knocked stuff over. Purple, violet, violet, deco art. I shall spare you the scraping. Nice light violet, light colors, dark colors, all the colors. Deco Art Amethyst that is not mixed with Deep Sapphire. Zappa White. Blob the rest of that on top and just call it done. I don't think I mind the mixing of them too much since I'm using up all this paint because they're gonna mix anyway. That's the fun of it. little blast of black into it. Not much. the side. I need something needly to fix this. Okay, we got it. It's okay. All right, that is a purple cup ready to pour. Okay, so there's one. We 
we got what seven more to do seven more to do what will always have to be my favorite cup is gonna be the blue cup and we got a lot of the blues got a ton of this very lightened ultramarine blue that's a Montmartre custom mix but it's just ultramarine and white titanium white eight to one ratio so it is quite 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 light this is artist loft cerulean which i have also lightened i added white to it because it wasn't pale enough and then it was too pale because we're picky artist loft light blue i have also lightened this one with white lightened too much in the final product so we got a bit of that there arteza electric blue this is a lovely color I like, I like, I like. I like the uh, Arteza metallics a whole lot. They are expensive though. Deco Art Ice Blue. This one was an impulse buy while I was trying to get Peacock Pearl. Well, trying to, I succeeded. I got me some Peacock Pearl. Ice Blue helped get me to uh, free shipping <laughs> because I would rather spend $11 more and get more paint then I would just to spend it on shipping. Crown Mount Meadows, Regale Blue. And that is basically the blue department. I don't think I will use much white. I think I'm largely going to use that as the white. And I've already lightened these ones, so I kind of already have white involved. But I probably will add just a quick little zap of black. Since I've got so much of this. Whoa, let's do it half the jar, why not? Uh, regular blue. That's probably too close. I do, unless you really, really, really stretch them out. Regale blue and electric blue pretty much look quite a bit similar. And, uh, chrome malt metals does it cheaper, so <laughs> you can decide whether that is worth it or not. Electric blue. I do like that electric blue, though. I do, I do. I do, I do like electric blue. Might as well pour it down through. Getting a little dirty with our pour here. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's time to start scraping. Going to have a very full blue cup. That is a full glass. And there is no black. Hmm. I may decide to zap some black down into it right before I pour it, but anything more going in there is going to get wasted. In fact, it's already coming down the edge. So I will probably set it here. So at least that blue is, that's drizzling is going to go in a relatively blue area. This uh, next row is largely silvers. This is uh, Montmartre Gray. Gray. Boring. But not really worried about it. Arteza Silver. This is Montmartre Silver. I don't think I had the greatest luck with that one, but that's okay. Chroma Malt Metals. Bergare Silver. Deco Art Sterling Silver, which I do love the Sterling Silver. It's a nice color. I think what I'm going to do, since this is just like silvery gray, I am going to do black and white in the silver, but I'm also going to carry the blue over, and it's going to be right next to it, so... Silver, silver, silver. The dark one. The not shiny one. Bit of white. Tiny bit of Arteza one. <laughs> Duh. Oh. A lot of that one. That's the, uh, that's the Montmartre one that I think I only used once. About a year ago. Because <laughs> these paints is old. I'm gonna give... Uh, 
sterling silver scrape. There we go. Gray. The last of the gray. Touch more of that blue. Little zap of the black down through it. Also going to try to do a zap of the white down through it. You see how I kind of sprayed it down into so that uh, it goes down, sinks into the layers. That's about as full as that cup's going to get because we're kind of out of paint. I guess I could pour the rest of this blue. There. The cup is gone and it's much fuller now. That's doing some interesting little cells right there. <laughs> it's fun to see what it does before you even do anything because it does stuff. Moving right along to our green stripe. The green stripe is probably the one that I am most concerned about because I have folk art green gold. Never liked this color. And for some reason, I have two tubs of it. And it has separated, so we'll just shake shake it a little bit. I've also got olive. Uh, it's green. It's an unfortunate green. I'm not crazy about olive. There are applications for it. I think it kind of went pretty well in dust in the wind. I believe that's where it came from. But, uh, yeah. I'm hoping I don't really regret including it in this uh, leftovers pour. Snow cooler green left over from way up north. I loved way up north, but I do not love the snow cooler paints. Creative Inspirations Viridian. Oh, how I love Viridian. There is a very tiny bit left in there, but uh, yes, I love Viridian. And Artist Loft Aqua Green, the only Artist Loft color in these pastels that I did not dilute with white because I wasn't trying to do my angel wing project. Yes, we'll start with the green gold. Okay. I guess I'm glad there's a fair bit of this aqua green because that's a, a nice color. Watch it make me regret saying that. The snow color green. The olive that I was just whining about. I'm gonna put a zap of white in there. Maybe a zap of black. We have zapped. It has been zapped. Viridian. Nice blap of viridian so it hopefully ends up somewhere in the middle and doesn't get lost off the edges because I would be sad. I love viridian. Even in a weird accent. I'm a weirdo, what do you expect? i go with a bit more of that aqua on top of there. Some more of the green gold. Some more of that olive. Because I live. Let's see if I can encourage some of this lighter green out. Resin and accounted for. The rest of the aqua, of which there is very little. This is good. This is good. We're using up odds and ends. This is good. I don't know about that color combination. Oh boy. The greens is making me nervous. Finish it off with green gold. What do we have here? Not more pale yellow with little black things in it for some reason. Montmart Naples yellow, which was used very wonderfully in uh, Floaty Feather. Montmart Yellow Deep. Did you get a good look at that? Yellow Deep. Montmart Lemon Yellow, which also has I got a little black flecks of stuff in all my yellow paint. Got messy yellow paint. Now, a problem tends to seem to be that black will encourage yellow to go green and we already have green and it's usually a fairly not great green as well so I am going to try to just pad this out the best I can with white and let it be sunny and yellow all by itself don't ask me why I go for white 
and then directly into the cream color, but what were my options, right? This job requires a spoon. How about if I cheat and use some pearl chartreuse? Technically it is left over. It's a yellowy greeny thingy. It dries more yellow. I think, but um, yeah, we'll cheat and zap it with a little bit of a little bit of that. Why not? So I'll pop a little more of the chartreuse in because then uh, the the sooner I clear out this bottle, the sooner I can rescue the spoon that is stuck in the bottom of it that I lost while I was mixing paint. Okay, white is very clogged. I'm hoping it won't put clumps. It is about as yellow as we're going to get. What I am going to do, I don't even know if it's a good idea to include this one. This is probably the oldest of my leftover paints. I combined a bunch of golds into one. Um, problem is, there's silicone in this because the first like four or five paintings I ever did had silicone in them. And uh, this is leftover from those. So that means that there's a cleaning problem when I want to uh, finish up the, uh, the finishing portion. Um, but it's just a little bit, so we'll deal with it. Chrome Malt Meadows, Xanadu Gold. That dries a lot more goldy than you would expect for this creamy, orangish yellow color that it actually has. And the two of these are Sergeant Art Aztec Gold. And the Fuller Sergeant Art Aztec Gold. Very bold gold. I suspect got used for the tray table, but I cannot guarantee such things. And another questionable choice is the Montmartre Raw Sienna. I think I'm going to use this largely instead of black in this one and just kind of get a, a tiger stripe thing going on, I would hope. <laughs> we will see. I am questioning my inclusion of brown in this painting, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna deal with our nightmares as they come up, right? <laughs> Something like that. Xanadu gold. That gold was the silicone. That may be a bad idea to include. A little bit of that raw sienna. More of that gold, more of that sienna, a lovely dollop of sergeant art, big old dollop of sergeant art, the rest of the mixed golds, Looks like I probably am going to end up with more Sergeant Art Gold left over. Well, maybe not. I got. There will just be a lot of it. It's going to be mostly Sergeant Art Gold. <laughs> and finish that off with the rest of the rural Sienna. Ooh, look at that. That's kind of a little bit of lovely right there. Can you get a look at that? Little gold streak. Maybe, maybe, maybe the raw sienna is not something to fear. I do not know. Can't say that I find a lot of excuses to use brown. Any poor? 
but they include them with a lot of painting kits because I guess a lot of people like great like painting trees and stuff instead of just big messes like I do. I have Montmartre orange yellow Ooh, dripping it all over the place fairly full <laughs> the barely present creative inspirations cadmium orange hue and the slightly cheating custom mixed copper canary it doesn't necessarily count as an orange but i don't have a lot of orange so we're going with it i'm gonna start with some white why do i feel like making gray i do so i'm gonna go with it the mood takes you you go i'm gonna pop a bit more white on that use the only bit of cadmium orange that we're going to get in this it's very sunny yellow orange some white a very quick zap of black some more of that the rest of the copper canary Zappa white. The rest of this yellow. Zappa black. And that's as done as that one's going to get. Unless I flood it. Whoa, throwing spoons. We have the reds. We have. Creative Inspirations Scarlet Lake. I do like that color. I like Carmine better, but Scarlet Lake is not bad. Chroma Molten Metals Ruby Red. Fair bit of that. We have Montmartre Pink. Because you can't have red without pink. Or something. Uh, Montmartre Magenta is slightly questionable inclusion for the red section but there's not a ton of it and we will probably have extras of this the unrepeatable red that i made for way up north that i made way too much of i feel strangely compelled to start with white unrepeatable red i'm gonna put in the Magenta. Pink. No, there's not enough pink to just pour it. There's not enough pink to just pour it. The sparkly ruby red. Pop a bit of black into it. Scarlet. Unrepeatable red. I don't think there's a ton of difference between unrepeatable red and the uh, the ruby, other than it's much easier to pour it right from a bottle than it is to mix it yourself. Yay! I put a touch of black. The I guess the rest of the unrepeatable red, and then finish up with a little bit of white. Okay. That's as messy as that's gonna get. Red goes over here. Okay, so here we are at our starting gates. Mixed reds, mixed oranges, mixed golds. Mixed yellows with that chartreuse looking a little green. Mixed greens, mixed silvers with a bit of blue. Mixed blues, mixed purples. Hooray. Here we are. I'm just kind of going to wandering pour these down into little sections and hopefully fill the whole thing and 
go from there. So, you can see when I pull it out now, get an idea. Wow, that paint is thick. Do the same thing with the orange. I think we're still in view well enough. There's a lot of black in that orange. I'm just going to wander all through it. Let it be colorful. Here comes the gold. Pouring them out a little fast. I have a tendency to pour them out quite fast. But I'm just letting it do its little whatever it wants to. I did not get a lot of dark in this. That's interesting. I mean, there's a patch. It's in there, but... for our yellows. Boom. Chartreuse. Coming on strong. Here's the sunny bit. Oh yeah, there's a lot of chartreuse in there. Let's try to make it meet up with the other colors so we won't have a lot of blank space to try to go into. And I'm just going to Drizzly, drizzly. Sky right all over that thing. Because I like busy. I don't like big blocks of one color.
Here comes the green. Get in. And it's basically just a big old sheet of full card green gold. Here's the rest of it. Gonna make nice designs. I like what the black is doing with that aqua. I hope it stays. So that's a very cool little strip of black cells going on up in there. I really kind of like that green. <laughs> the one that I was afraid of most. The silver that wants to be blue. With the silver, 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 silver. It's very blue for being silver. Mm -hmm. Once again, little lines of black cells. Like it. Break up the solid block there. Come the blue. The best, the best, the best. Blue is the best. Look at that stripe. Fantastic stripe. And I foresee much of this going into that bag if I don't move the whole canvas over. Another pretty thick looking one. Oh, that's just crazy. I am probably looking to go this way because I've got space over here that is just bare canvas, which we don't want. And I've got overflowing over here, which we don't want either. Mm -hmm. The red is not moving yet. 
That's problematic. Actually, I am going to kind of hopefully get it flowing a little bit. everything except that corner going <laughs> you're still not getting a lot stretched off on the red strangely liking this. There's a really interesting flow to it. So far I'm thinking I may have to call it flying colors because there's a there's a little motion to it. I have a friend at work that asked me why I use the fire gun and I like calling it a fire gun. We shall call it a fire gun. we use our fire gun largely to pop bubbles in this instance because I do not use silicone barring the gold this time usually it warms the silicone and helps the densities to change I think it does a little bit with the wood conditioner but I could not bet my life on it but you do see things change a little bit when it gets hit with the torch. So that is doing things other than just popping bubbles. I think that red is still a little bit thick on there, but I don't want to, don't want to push it off anymore because I like what's going on. I really, really do. I like that there's darks, there's lights, there's so many different colors. Because there are what? What did we end up with? 41, 42? I don't know. I think I added one. Yeah, I added chartreuse, so. That makes it 42, doesn't it? 42 colors. And usually I'm afraid to use more than six. Ah, show you what I know. Oh, yes. This is spectacular. I love that the white is playing on the silver here. I like this vein of black that sort of loops over for no freaking reason. We'll see how I feel about the green gold when it, when it, when it, when it dries, because it will change. It tends to look more uh, goldy when it dries. This is probably the effect of the silicone 
That may be a suggestion that I should use silicone more often. Because silicone is in that and it's doing this interesting bubbly thing at the edge here, these wispies. There may be more of a place for silicone in my life than I thought, I don't know. And then the the orange is largely black, but I don't know, I'm okay with that. It's got little, 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 little rivulets of color or something. It's got little bits of color in it. Red, I am concerned the red's a little thick. This probably will take days and days and days to dry. But my goodness, for leftover paint it is... Woohoo! <laughs> That's the best word for it. It is just, yeah. You want to come down and see all of the crap that's going on in here? Should I call it crap? <laughs> come on down! Here we are on our purple side. Closer, closer, closer. That's close enough. Like the galaxy stuff going on, the wispy. I like what that uh, amethyst and sapphire is doing right at that edge. That's very nice. There's a little bit of, of a blue aspect to that, which feeds into the blue nicely. I'm just a blue girl. I do not deny. Got all those cells going on. Sort of marbly. And I'm sorry about the shine off my light there. It will just move along with this. Selves in the blue. Love how the purple sneaks up into there and just kind of mixes all the way in this swoop. And we got that. And this smoky silver with a little blue line through it. Blends so good. And this, that thing that the white does, that lacing effect that the white does, I do love me some nice, delicate lacing. Surprisingly lovely. Green cell popping up in there. The yellow with that rolling edge of cells with that gold. The chartreuse looking nice in there. And here we are to the gold. Oh my goodness, that gold is looking good. Yay. Very, very, very lovely. All of that. The cells, the, cells, the cells and the layering. Over to here, we see the orange section. Which is largely black. And the, the red section that will not, not be part of that. <laughs> Loops over, it's okay. Shall be continued on the next painting. <laughs> I like the layering and everything that's going on with the reds. And let's see if we can get a little less shine over here. If I shift, we can see. And we've got that lovely white lacing. There's even, oh my goodness, there's a heart in it. It's got a heart in it. So there it is. So far, it is called Flying Colors. I may decide that it will be called something else by the time it dries, but yeah, flying colors. 
Hey, here's an attempt to film using natural light. <laughs> the people that usually film their outros outside are in England and California and places that don't have six inches of snow on your back stoop. And that just ain't gonna fly with me, so I am here in my sort of utility room, that's why there's all the echo, and I'm using these little reflector things to try to encourage some natural light. Uh, hang on. This is about the best I can do. Let's go in for a close-up on this thing. Hopefully we will have gotten rid of the light artifact that comes from those lights that I use downstairs. Check out the purple section. Oh my goodness. And we're just going to take the elevator up and enjoy the view. Those blues and the silvers. I don't know if you can hear all that noise, but there is snow melting off my roof. And I am right near the downspout, so I can hear plonky, plonky, plonky like crazy. Check out the lacing in that silver. Ain't that pretty? And we got a dark line here. I think that's a green, even though it looks fairly black. I mean, it, 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 it should be a green. This is a green section. Got all that green gold in there. Ow, I just hit my foot on something. I have got to clear up the mess in this utility room. You can see the chartreuse in that yellow. It's a nice compliment to the green. Still have that sort of soft, bubbly looking line between the gold. And going up, 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 we've got this shiny, very textured, because I think that the uh, red was too thick. I think that um, unrepeatable red was just a problem from start to finish. But it is pretty. And I don't know if you can still see it. Where is she? It's right here, right there. I'm gonna take you on a little twisty tour. Here we go, nice and slow. That is a teeny tiny heart. Ain't it cute? It didn't dry as well. It looked more prominent when it was uh, wet, but it's still there. So, this thing if I can ever so gently glide you back without tripping over anything or anything. There's a ladder in this room and it wants to knock me on my butt. But I ain't gonna let it. So that there is flying colors. If you wanna watch me paint other paintings of this sort of variety, Oh my goodness, that's an awkward way of saying it, but if y'all want to, then uh, I release new videos every Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Uh, in Mountain Time. So, you know, subscribe, hang around, comment, like, do the things, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>